Hello and welcome back, Sleepy What's It here, and I have another miniatures video for you. In today's video, we're going to be starting to paint a Space Marine Primaris Intercessor in a Space Wolves color scheme. This video is going to be the first video in a pair about painting as Space Wolves. This pair of videos is going to be a continuation of kind of a series, I guess, I've been doing of videos on painting 40k miniatures targeted newcomers to the hobby. I've previously done um, an Assault Intercessor and, and an Ultramarine Scheme and a Necron and things like that. What this means to you is I'm going to be focusing on using basic techniques and a limited range of paints to help get you tabletop quality minis out there so you can start playing your games. I'm going to be expanding the paint selection from my previous videos to be a little bit wider uh, than just what comes strictly speaking in the starter sets, so that at least we have an appropriate base color to work with. But in general, especially for the beginner paint job, I'm going to really try and restrict myself uh, to more common uh, paints. For brushes, I'm going to be using my standard brushes instead of something like GW Starter Brush, which is actually kind of terrible. If you are painting anything more than your first model, I highly recommend getting a better brush than that to work with. Uh, specific brand, material, etc. for brushes, I think are very much a personal preference. So I'm not going to be recommending specifics to you. I'm just going to generally describe what I use. Um, I use uh, three, size, uh, three sizes of round sable brushes normally. Basically a larger basic brush, a medium-sized layering brush, and then some sort of fine detailing brush. If you haven't seen my paint along videos before, I use markers to indicate when you should pause the video and complete a step that I've just described. They look something like this. I'll put down in the description the timestamps uh, for all these different steps so that you can jump uh, to whatever section you want uh, later if, uh, if you're reviewing things. For these videos, I'm going to be painting a standard Primaris Intercessor without any of the Space Marine uh, upgrade sprue bits. Um, this is primarily, primarily because I don't have those sprues since I don't play Space Wolves. Though with the help of viewers like you over on Coffee, I would be able to get uh, upgrade kits for future videos. The scheme that I'm detailing in these videos should be uh, pretty transferable though to an upgraded model, though I'm specifically not going to be discussing on how to paint the fur or like bare heads. In this uh, video I'm going to be doing a uh, basic uh, tabletop paint job using a very restricted palette targeting at uh, beginners and speed painters. For the next uh, the video that falls onto it, so the other half, I'm going to be going into some detail on how to take this paint job to the next level and doing some of the finishing elements like how to apply transfers. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the painting. For this tutorial, I'm not going to detail how to assemble and prime this model. I've done that. I've covered that in a number of other videos. Um, specifically, I've covered it in a previous paint along video, which I'll put a card up for now and a link down in the description so you can go review that if you need to. I've primed my model a light gray since the base coat that we're going to be applying is going to be a kind of a lighter shade of blue, so it will it's close tonally. If you only have black primer, that'll work fine. You just may have to put down multiple layers to get a really good coverage. Same thing with something like white primer. The first layer of paint that we're going to be applying to our model is Rust Gray from GW, which is a mid-tone gray-blue. We're going to undercoat the entire model with this paint, making sure that it's thin enough to not fill in the details. If thinned correctly, the first layer is probably going to go down a bit patchy, so you'll have to apply a second coat to get uniform color. That kind of two coat, th thinner paint two coat, can be quite common throughout the uh, tutorial. We're going to be uh, painting over some of this undercoat later, but honestly, it's just quicker to hit the entire model now instead of trying to be precise and avoid some of those areas. Obviously, if you have access to an airbrush, it's much quicker to use that to get this undercoat down. But again, I don't expect a beginner to have access to an airbrush. If you're doing a large batch of uh, Space Wolves, um, I don't think uh, GW makes a rust gray rattle can that you could use, uh, but I do believe Army Painter has uh, a rattle can wolf gray. I believe that's basically a combo undercoat and primer, though I have never used it specifically, but if you're doing a whole bunch of models, it may be worth looking into using something like that. 
You can pause the video now and go undercoat your model. This is what your model should look like with all the rust gray applied. The next color that we're going to be painting on the model is red. This is going to be on the inset of the right shoulder and the right knee pad. The paint we're going to be using for this is Mephesiton uh, Red. This is a pigment rich paint, but when thinned, it's a, to, uh, when you've thinned enough to avoid showing brush strokes, it's still going to require two layers to get good coverage. The first layer is probably going to be a bit purple from the blue undercoat, but that should be dealt with by applying a second layer of paint. Try to apply these sections with control and cleanly, but don't get too worked up about it if you make any overage mistakes. You can clean them up later using a rust gray. You can pause the video now and go paint the red regions on the model. This is what my version of the model looks like with the red regions base coated. We're now going to be painting the left shoulder of the model. In the end, we're going to want this epaulgen to end up yellow. Yellow in general don't have great coverage, so it would take many, many coats to get a nice application over our rust gray undercoat. To speed this process up, we're going to actually be basing out the inset using Corax White, since it has good coverage and it's a little bit easier to apply yellow over white. Uh, though, admittedly, if you have a different white from a different brand, I would probably use it here instead of Corax White because this paint tends to get a bit chalky, so you're going to have to make sure to keep it well mixed and thin it well. If you've thinned it well, it will, of course, take a couple layers to get complete coverage, but it's still going to be far fewer than if you were painting yellow directly over it. In addition to the left shoulder inset, you can also paint the paper on the purity seal at this point. You should pause the video and paint the areas I've described white. This is where we should be once the white has been applied and dried. The next step is to paint the actual yellow on the shoulder. The paint we're going to be using for this is Averlin Sunset. This is a slightly darker yellow that will take a couple layers to get full coverage over the white. As with the red paint, focus on getting complete coverage of the inset and cleaning up any overages using rust gray later. You should pause the video now and paint the left pauldron. This is how the yellow came out on my model, though I haven't gone in and cleaned up the edges yet. The next thing we're going to be doing is painting in all the black areas of the model. This will be areas like the back of the knees, the undercarriage, the inside the elbows, inside the shoulder areas. Basically anywhere there's that kind of like ribbed under armor stuff going on. You're also going to want to undercoat the bolter and the scanner, as well as the fence on the pack and the pipes on the helmet. Though these won't be black in the end, but we are going to be painting them a steel gray color later. You can pause the video now and paint the black areas of the model. After painting all the black areas on the model, my miniature looks like this. We're almost done with the matte uh, base co uh, coating at this point. Now we're going to uh, get out our dark brown paint, Rhinox Hide, and paint the belt and the containers attached to it. You can pause the video and go uh, paint this area. At this point, the only non-metallic that we still need to put on our model is the undercoat for areas that are going to be gold. We could have undercoated this just using our black paint, but gold over black tends to be a touch to all, since the gold is a touch translucent. We could also have used Rhinox Hide directly, but that will have given us a more bronzy tone than I really wanted. So instead, we're going to mix some Averlin Sunset into our Rhinox Hide to give us kind of a yellow-brown or a dark tan color. Obviously, if you have a paint that's this tone already available, you don't need to mix one up. But in the interest of limiting the number of different paints uh, I'm requiring, I'm going to mix this. The specific tone isn't super important. You're just wanting something that's darker than our yellow, but brighter than our brown. This undercoating will help brighten and warm the gold paint uh, when we lay it down over it. This needs to be painted on the chest emblem, the emblem on the bolter, and the button in the middle of the belt buckle. You can pause the video, mix up some paint, and undercoat the areas that are going to need it. With all the matte painting out of the way, this is how my model looks. Now we're going to start applying our metallic base coats. For the steel colored areas, we're going to use Lead Belcher, which is a dark steel color. Iron Hand Steel would be a good alternative if you have that. This will need to be thinned a little bit more than our mats, since metallics tend to clump. But other than that, it should just be basic, like basic painting the matte areas. 
You're going to want to paint the bits on the bolter, like the muzzle, the grips, the magazine, and the scope. You're also going to want to get the all those vents on the backpack and the two pipes that appear on the front of the helmet. You should pause the video now and go apply some lead belcher to your model. And this is how my model looks with all the lead belcher applied. The final base coat that we need to do is all the gold areas of the model. This is going to be done using Retributor Armor. If you wanted a darker gold tone, um, you could also use something like Belthazar Gold, but I do prefer Retributor Armor. We're going to want to paint the quill on the chest and the bolter, as well as the belt button. Once you've uh, done this painting, you should go over the entire model and clean up any blown out edges or like overages you have, basically any mistakes you previously made. This is because we're going to be shading the model next, and once we apply the shade, it's difficult to go fix these base coating issues. You should pause the video now, finish the base coating, and then clean up any issues that you have with your base coats. This is how my model looks like with all the base layers applied and then cleaned up. Now that we have the color regions of the model blocked out, we're going to start working on refining them to give the model more contrast and visual interest. To begin this, we're going to be darkening the recesses by applying a shade to the entire model, uh, specifically Agrax Earthshade, which is a, brown, a dark brown toned shade. We want to make sure to hit every element of the model with this shade so that it stains it, but we also want to make sure that it doesn't form large puddles, um, so we want to use, use our brush after we've applied the stain to wick that away. Once you've applied the shade, make sure to let it completely dry before moving on uh, with the paint job. This is going to take about 15 minutes or possibly more, depending on how dry it is where you are. So you can uh, go make yourself some coffee, watch one of my other YouTube videos, you know, just do something to fill your time. You should now pause the video and go slop some shade on your model. Now this is what my model looks like with the shade dried. If you're try just trying to get models down and out on the table to meet like a three color rule, you could probably stop at this step or actually probably for the previous step would meet a three color rule. But even for basic troops, I like to take my paint jobs a little bit further. So we're going to do a bit more work before calling the beginner section of this tutorial done. What we're going to be working on now is brightening up all of the areas that we hit with the dark shade. Since though we darken the recesses, we've also dark into the high bright areas. And we're just generally gonna be cleaning up the color since the shade will have probably made it look a little bit grimy. This is gonna be achieved by layering in our base paints that we applied before into the high areas to highlight them. So we're basically gonna be following the same order that we did the original base layers in. For this layer, you're gonna to wanna to thin your paint a little bit more than you did when you were basing. So this will also mean that you'll probably have to make sure to dab off any excess paint on your brush. Otherwise, it will tend to be runny and spill over without control on the model. Obviously, we're gonna be starting uh, working on the armor using our rust gray. When cleaning up the model, what you wanna be doing is focusing the paint on the top areas of the model to brighten them a little bit more. Imagine how the model would be lit if there was like a light sitting right above it and you can that will kind of give you an idea of where it should be brighter versus darker. You can put the model under an overhead light if you want to give it an actual idea of how shadows will fall on it. So areas like the top of the backpack, the top of the helmet, the shoulders, um, top of the arms um, will be brighter than like the undersides that you're going to see like on the side of the feet or like under, under edges of like the downward facing sides of arms. Try to avoid getting too much paint into the crevices where the shade collected and on the underside of the panels, though you will probably want to apply a little bit to clean up those undersides. What we're doing, trying to do here is create con uh, uh, more contrasted than real life model because at tabletop distance, um, you need these strong light and dark contrasts to really sell the shape of the model. Otherwise, it kind of just looks very much like a toy. Um, you should pause the video now and brighten up the rust gray on your model. This is how my model looks like after I've spent the time to clean up and brighten all of the armor on it. For the rest of the matte colors on the model, we're going to be following a similar process, thinning the original base colors and then uh, trying to hit the high points of the model. This should work fine for Mephiston uh, Red and Ryan Oxide. 
For the Avalon Sunset areas, uh, you'll probably have to apply multiple coats to clean up the dark patches uh, from the shade, just to be aware of that. Uh, when working on the shoulder uh, insets, you don't want to fill all the way into the rim. Instead, try and leave like a small line of shaded paint around the edge to help sh more sharply distinguish the colored areas from the rim of the shoulder. For that, but on black areas, you probably don't need to apply much in the way of cleanup because, and you're not really brightening because it's black. Unless, of course, you have shade that pooled long enough uh, on the black to make the area a bit more um, sad or glossy instead of matte. If you do have areas like that, yeah, you can bring some Abaddon black in to clean that up. Uh, for metallic areas, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna be following the same basic process using our original base color to brighten things up. But because many of these areas are smaller, we're gonna need to be using a little bit more control. We can achieve this control via three methods combined. First, we're gonna step down our brush size. So if you based an area using a larger brush layer, use a medium. If you started out at a medium sized brush, go down to your detailing brush, that type of thing. Second, use a slightly thicker paint uh, for layering, but less of it. Specifically, we're gonna probably stay around where your base and consistency was, but we're only gonna be putting small uh, bits of it on the brush at a time instead of fully loading it up. This will slow down the process a little bit, but will uh, uh, prevent blowouts all over the place. And finally, when we're actually brushing the model, when we're doing layering, it's similar, if normally similar to how we'd be applying our base layer. But with these fine details, we want to kind of more gently graze the brush along the area to brighten it, like, and, and maybe even hit it, just hit it lightly with the side. This light tickling motion, as it will, where will help only deposit small amounts of paint on the model. Um, you may have to make multiple passes to get. A, enough uh, paint down so it brightens it as much as you want it, but we avoid the risks of overpainting in a single pass by doing this. This type of controlled painting is how we really want to tackle any smaller details uh, during this uh, layering phase, but uh, for this model specifically, they mostly appear on the metallic elements of the model. So you should pause the video now and uh, go clean up your model uh, to your heart's content. So this is how my model looks like after going in and highlighting everything else uh, using the base paint. This is what I call a base table stop uh, standard personally. And this is uh, kind of the end of the beginner level painting paint along tutorial. The one thing that's missing uh, from this video uh, for what I would consider completing this model for a beginner is how to do the shoulder albums on the model. They're not essential for a beginner's paint job, but they do um, really, they're like the one thing that you can really do that makes it look complete and finished. Um, the instructions for how to do that are actually gonna be appearing at the end of the next video in the, this pair, because they're, these finishing touches uh, can be applicable to both paint jobs, so that's why they end up all the way at the end of the tutorial. There will be a timestamp in the description for that video uh, to the sections uh, discussing how to do the shoulders, so you can jump straight there if you need to. The second video in this paint along will cover how to take this paint job that we've done up to the next level and should be coming out about a day after this one is released so you shouldn't have too long of a wait. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this paint along and found it informative. If you did, please give the video a like. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to keep up with what I'm working on and things like that, feel free to follow me on the various social media platforms down below. If you found this video really helpful and want to support the channel more materially, I do have a coffee account where I can accept tips, which will help me get things like video specific models or better equipment, things like that. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the second video.